MailChimp just sold to Intuit for $12 billion in what's been called the largest sale of a bootstrapped company in history. So, of course, us ninjas, our ears pricked up at largest and bootstrapped and billion. So we decided to record a video deep diving the digital marketing that had brought MailChimp to that colossal valuation. And here it is. Now, they're doing some incredible stuff. They've really built this brand using digital marketing, and we're going to be looking at exactly what they've done to do that. But they're also doing some of the weirdest digital marketing I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of really weird digital marketing over the years. So trust me, you're going to want to stick around to the end for this one. We're going to look at exactly what they've done well, the lessons that we can learn, and also the pitfalls that we might want to avoid. Mate, there are some pitfalls. Enjoy. All right, so MailChimp is a SaaS business, software as a service, selling email marketing services, basically. Um, although they have expanded their product range out. Now, like any SaaS business, the kind of fundamental maths that they need to do is how much does it cost us to acquire a customer or CAC cost versus the value of that customer once we get them. LTV or whatever kind of metric they use, however long the payback period is. Basically, the name of the game in SaaS, like many subscription businesses, is can you acquire a customer for less than that customer is worth to you over an acceptable period? If you can do this, you can then reinvest the difference, that profit, into your marketing and continue expanding. That's exactly what MailChimp has done, which has meant that they've had to take no investment at all in their growth, which is phenomenal and quite rare in this space. So how are they doing it? Well, we're going to start by analyzing their website. We're then going to have a look at traffic sources and then that weird marketing stuff as well. And then at the end, I'm going to break down the key lessons for you. Okay, let's start by analyzing MailChimp's website because like for most businesses, the website is where visitors turn into customers or leads. This is their, where the rubber meets the road, if you like. But before we do that, what were you doing on the 9th of December, 2001? It's okay, I, I don't actually care. But do you know what the MailChimp website was doing on the 9th of December, 2001? Sucking. <laughs> now, before we're too harsh, obviously this was the early 2000s. This is what websites looked like. And whilst it might look basic, hopefully that gives those of you who are starting a new business little bit of reassurance because if your website looks like this today, who knows, in 20 years, maybe you will be worth $12 billion. Now, even though this website looks quite basic and that yellow tone is really searing into the eyeballs, there is some stuff on this page which hints at the greatness that was to follow. They have nailed so many of the marketing things which we talk about every single day here on the Exposure Ninja YouTube channel. First of all, this headline, MailChimp makes HTML email easy. Bingo! They know exactly what they do and they know exactly how to communicate it. We've got some very clear benefit statements here. Simple copy and paste interface, very affordable. And even what makes MailChimp different from the rest. Now this is a section that we would happily recommend any business starting up today to include on their website. This is fantastic. We've got a call to action, the free trial, exactly where we would expect to see it. We've got the screenshots. You have no idea how many SaaS websites we are sent to review where we end up recommending that you should put some screenshots on your website so that people can actually see what they're buying before you ask them to buy it. They've even got a softer call to action where you can get an example email from them just by putting in your name and email. And they've got credibility through the testimonials. So whilst this website might look a little bit basic, actually the marketing principles here are solid and they've used many of these principles throughout their growth journey. So let's fast forward to today and we'll see what the current version of the MailChimp website looks like. Now, whilst they've got some of these elements still in play, for example, we've got the sign up free call to action. This is the lowest version of their freemium offering where you can sign up for free and then pay to get additional features and capacity. We've got that. But actually, I would argue that as MailChimp's offering has grown and they've added more components into their service, because they are no longer just email marketing, 
the messaging is becoming somewhat confused. This headline here, reach your customers at all the right moments. Well, that's kind of the goal, but what is MailChimp? What does MailChimp actually do? Now, for most of us, we know MailChimp as an email marketing platform. We recommend MailChimp to people hundreds of times a year as an email marketing platform. And people ask us, what email marketing platform should I use? And sometimes we say MailChimp. So that is kind of what it's known as and its core function, if you like. But they've added on additional functionality like website businesses and domains and all sorts of alternative marketing stuff. And one of the challenges when a business does this is that it becomes more and more difficult to communicate what the business actually does. We saw this in our recent deep dive of Monday.com's digital marketing where rather than being a project management software, they ended up talking about all this other stuff that really didn't necessarily mean anything to customers. And that can make it quite confusing to understand what they do. So this is a challenge that lots of businesses go through as they start to broaden and expand their offering. And by the way, they are not alone in this difficulty. One of their competitors, Active Campaign, has a similar sort of thing going on. You can see the headline on their homepage is get started today with 50% off all plans. Well, that's a little forward. I don't even know what you do yet. They call themselves a customer experience automation platform. Again, that's fine, but that is just jargon. Unless I'm looking for a customer experience automation platform, which by the way, we know this target audience and we know that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for an email marketing platform which allows them to do automation and other things as well. So there are much simpler ways to communicate that. If we have a look at Aweber, a third competitor in the space, their headline, build a stronger connection with your audience, meh, but then they describe exactly what they do here. Get email marketing, landing pages, web push notifications, and so much more when you sign up free today. Bingo, they're telling us exactly what they do in the language that we understand. So the key principle to take from this is you need to be able to explain exactly what it is that you do in the language that your target customers use. The response you're looking for with your target customers when they see your website or they hear you describe what you do in a sentence is, ah, that's exactly what we want. Which is why email marketing plus all these other things make sense to people because I'm looking for email marketing and you're also gonna give me landing pages and SMS marketing and all these other things on top, which is nice and simple for our frazzled brains to understand. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. We post a new one every week. Don't forget also, if you want some help with your digital marketing, you can request a free website and digital marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. All you need to do is fill out a bit of information about your business, tell us about your goals. We will then record you a 15 minute video and send it over to you within two to three working days, showing you how to generate more leads and sales from your website completely free of charge. It's an awesome, awesome service. These videos are totally bespoke recorded by our consultancy team. So to get your free website and marketing review, just go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and request your review today. Okay, so now it's time to have a look at how MailChimp is driving traffic. Now, as you would expect for a company valued at $12 billion, they have a good presence with both organic and paid search. So that's where we're gonna start before looking at social. So organic wise, what's going on? Well, they're driving a good volume of traffic. SE ranking estimates 1.2 million visits per month in the US alone, which is phenomenal. Now, if we have a look at some of the organic keywords that are ranking, i.e. the phrases that they're ranking for on Google, we see that a lot of their traffic is actually coming through branded search. So people searching for MailChimp and MailChimp login. Now you've got two types of branded search searcher. You have people that have seen MailChimp around and they are interested in finding out more. But you also have what we call navigational searches. So these are existing customers that are looking for a login basically. And that's what MailChimp login, that shows you the volume of their customer base that you can get 165,000 searches per month from people looking for their MailChimp login area. So we can assume that a large percentage of this MailChimp search is also that type of navigational search. So what else is the site ranking for? Well, we've got lots of visibility for some competitor terms. We also have some generic email type terms like mail and emails and email. One thing I wanted to highlight in particular was this ranking for digital marketing where they're ranking position one 
for such a competitive and broad term. Now, the page that's ranking is this one, and MailChimp has a fantastic glossary section on their website, which has loads of informational content giving basically definitions and descriptions of key terms which they've identified their customers might be interested in. Now, you could say that somebody searching for digital marketing isn't necessarily a MailChimp customer because they're very early in their journey. If I don't know what digital marketing is, then how can I possibly be ready to sign up for an email marketing platform? But actually, I would argue that MailChimp is in many ways the perfect business to rank for that type of term. They could do worse than sign up for MailChimp and use the various tools that are available. So that's good. But the challenge I have with this is the implementation. And here's why. So let's say I've searched for digital marketing on Google and I come through to this page. I don't necessarily know anything about MailChimp at this stage. Now, this is a well-written page. It has all of the subsections and subheadlines that we would expect in order for a page to rank for an informational term like this. But what it doesn't have is any sort of sales proposition for MailChimp whatsoever. I can even get down to the email marketing section and nowhere is MailChimp mentioned, despite this being a core feature of MailChimp service. Now, at the weekend, my wife and I were shopping out for a piano. So we're looking to buy a piano. And one of the places that we went to, we spoke to a very helpful sales assistant who was basically helpful, but nothing else. I was asking questions about the particular model that we were interested in, and they were answering them with lots of authority and lots of knowledge. It was clear that they knew what they were talking about, but we didn't buy a piano because at the end of the conversation, it ended with, okay, thank you. Well, I'm here if you need me. And that's useless. That's basically what we've got going on here. We've got lots and lots of information, but there is no killer CTA, which says, oh, and by the way, if you're interested in using email marketing, you can get started with MailChimp free of charge. See how I would have liked to see this page laid out would be to use elements of MailChimp's product as screenshots throughout this content. There's no images at all, so it makes it quite a dry page. We've got this take your business to the next level, start today, but it's really ambiguous and I don't even know what MailChimp does at this stage, so I'm nowhere near being able to commit to something like that. Whereas if they had images dotted throughout with here's how the personalization works and here's how email marketing works and here's how automation works inside MailChimp and you can click here to get started free of charge, that's really compelling. Now, this is quite a common issue that we see with businesses that have built a lot of informational content on their website, but it's not necessarily generating them leads or sales. It's just kind of there and it's ranking and it's getting traffic, but that's kind of vanity and nothing else really happens from it. So this is a big opportunity for a lot of businesses. It's how you turn that informational visitor, that informational search into a quantified lead or sale, something that has commercial benefit to you. So if we head back over to SE Ranking, which by the way, you can get a free trial of at bestninjatool.com, we'll see there's something else I wanted to point out, and that is this. So the MailChimp site is ranking for lots of terms around website builder or build a website, free website builder, stuff like that. And what they've done is they've built a website builder feature into their product. Now, this is clever for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, I would view MailChimp's biggest kind of strategic competitor as maybe someone like GoDaddy. If you think about GoDaddy's business model, they started off selling domains, then they added hosting and website builders and all sorts of other related marketing services. If GoDaddy added an email marketing component, that would be a big challenge to MailChimp's business because GoDaddy is getting businesses at the start of their digital marketing journey. Buying a domain name is one of the first things that you do when you set up a business. So GoDaddy will potentially have that customer kind of in a bit of a headlock and MailChimp would have to wrestle out their email marketing service if they wanted to do that. Now MailChimp have kind of worked the other way. So they've started with email marketing and then added in other things like the website builder and like domains later on so that they could build a fuller product offering. They could build vertically for their customer. So that's really smart. The other reason I think this is really smart is because who is about to buy email marketing? Well, often it's businesses that are just getting started building their website. So they've identified what else are people buying at the stage where they could be a potential customer for us and how can we target them in search? 
Now, they've done it by offering a website building service and building a website builder into their product. We can see the page that's ranking is this features page. So they have a features page on their site for each of the core features of their product. And this is the website builder one. And you can see they take you through the whole process and they've got calls to action throughout. So this is really smart. And if you're getting to the stage where you want to expand your audience beyond just the people that are searching for what you do, think about what else you can add to either serve people at an earlier or later stage of their journey, or what else are people looking for when they're about to buy you and how can you cater to them on your site? Now, if they wanted to take this to another level because the MailChimp page is only ranking position five for Website Builder, they could do worse than have a look at what their competitors GoDaddy are doing to rank position one for this term. Now you'll see on the MailChimp site that yes, they've got a lot of content or it's a fairly long page. There's actually not that much text on it. And they've got a few uh, questions at the bottom here with the, you know links through to other pages with more information. But if you compare this to the GoDaddy page that's ranking position one for this term, you'll see that there's a lot more content and they've also got these frequently asked questions down at the bottom. Somebody asking, why should I have a website? This is not a human being from the 21st century. A human being from the 21st century doesn't need to ask that question. So why have they done this? Well, they've done this to increase the amount of content on this page in order to help it rank better. So if MailChimp wanted to improve the ranking of their features pages, they could build out these FAQs in accordions like GoDaddy have done. So we see that GoDaddy's ranking strategy really has two prongs. We've got these features pages, which are the commercial focus pages. And then we've got those glossary pages, which are ranking for informational terms. Now, here's where things get slightly messy. If you search for email marketing, which let's be honest, is core to MailChimp's proposition, the page that ranks isn't their email marketing features page. The page that ranks is their glossary page all about email marketing. And actually, it's got a featured snippet. So let's imagine that I'm looking for an email marketing platform. I type in email marketing, I come through to this page. What happens? Well, MailChimp is an email marketing platform, but actually what I don't get here is any real sense of how I should use MailChimp or even that MailChimp is an email marketing platform. I'm getting pure information. This is walking into the piano shop and saying to the piano salesman, do you sell digital pianos? The piano salesman says, Digital pianos are a great alternative to acoustic pianos. You can wear headphones and that's it. There's no next step. This is what email marketing is. Here's how it works. Here's some screenshots of our email marketing platform. Here are some case studies of businesses that have used email marketing really effectively and click here to start your free trial and get started with all of this stuff at no cost today. It's so logical, but they're not doing it. So there's still money being left on the table, even at this stage. Like I said before, this is a common problem for businesses that have a lot of information or content and they're just ranking it, they don't even think about using it for conversions. Okay, let's now take a look at their paid search. And this is really interesting. Firstly, they're going pretty heavy on paid search. This is SE rankings estimate for their US spend and it's estimating $2 million per month. So they're going pretty hard. The other thing that we'll notice about MailChimp's ads, like all of the ads in this space, is that there's quite a lot of competitor targeting. All of these email marketing platforms are bidding on each other's brand names in order to try and steal traffic. Now, MailChimp has taken this a step further because they are also bidding on kind of non-competitive terms. Here we can see that they're running ads for Create Google Form. Now, that's kind of interesting because you wouldn't have thought that Google Forms would be a typical competitor for MailChimp. But if you have a look at the ads that they've been running, you'll see that MailChimp has been running ads on free customizable forms. Our intuitive form builder makes it easy to create customizable forms that drive results. So even though really Google Forms isn't a strict competitor, MailChimp has decided to pitch one of its product features against Google Forms. To, my guess would be that they just wanted to test to see if this is a good source of customer acquisition. So it's good to see them testing these different things, different types of competitors, not only email marketing competitors, but other competitors too. So the key lesson here is that if you're looking to expand your paid search marketing beyond just people that are looking for what you do, you can start to do this by thinking, what else are they purchasing at the time that they're thinking of buying from us? And also who are our competitors? Not just our direct competitors, but who are indirect competitors? Who else are our customers using at this sort of time? And can you build content targeting those phrases 
or even features into your product, which will target those customers. All right, let's move over to having a look at social media. Now for a lot of small and medium sized business owners, social media is really their kind of default home online because there is so much information available these days about how to start and run a business, including on the Exposure Ninja channel. By the way, I hope you're subscribed. So social media should be a great channel for MailChimp. Let's see what they're doing well. Now, the good news is that they've got a presence on each of the different platforms. The other good news is that their posts are pretty well designed, right? They've got a very clear uh, brand guidelines. They, they understand what their look is. We've got some nice looking videos, all the nice looking content as well. They've clearly thought about design and this is something that is a real priority for them. And it's a similar story across all their different channels. So everything looks pretty consistent. It all looks like MailChimp. But this is where things start to get a little bit weird. The first thing I noticed when I started having a look through their Facebook page, for example, was that they had half a million followers. So this isn't like a tiny page. Now, yes, of course, you've got the Shopify's of this world that are targeting really a similar sort of audience and have millions of followers. So clearly MailChimp isn't building as much of an audience as someone like Shopify. But then I started to look at the engagement on these posts and really there's not a whole lot. So for example, this was posted two days ago. It's got three likes. This is a pinned post. This 14 hours ago, two likes. 16 hours ago, nothing. Four days ago, five likes. But I mean, that's not the end of the world, right? Nobody has organic reach on Facebook these days. Well, almost nobody. The main issue I have is with the comments. So if we have a look at the comments on this post, for example, dear MailChimp, I've got a free account. The button to upload pictures isn't working. We've had a MailChimp response. Fantastic. That's how it should work. Same day response from the brand with Let's take this into the DMs and get it sorted for you. But then we've got stuff like this. I need to speak with you guys. You've suspended my account, but given no reasons, please contact me. Same here. It's clear they do not care. Do not use this service. Their treatment of customers is horrible. Now this stuff was posted more than 24 hours ago and nobody has responded. These are not the only posts. If you have a look at any of their posts, you'll see that the majority of the comments are negative. I'm getting sick of seeing your ads on YouTube. Go away, I will never use this. What does acquisition by Intuit mean for our rates? Ooh, savage. More crap I don't need. We're looking to set up. Is it possible to get assistance? No, basically. Are you guys down? Mandrill, two weeks ago. Come on. And by the way, it's not just Facebook. On their Instagram post, MailChimp instantly froze my account for a violation of terms of service. No reply. What is going on? This is a $12 billion company whose customers are taking to social media to publicly proclaim their difficulties and their hatred. Why is nobody responding? By the way, while we're here, call Paul Small Business Spotlight. Now, the information about this post is pretty minimal. Basically, this is a uh, behind the scenes, I guess, of uh, Adventure Cats and Laura Moss, who is the co-founder and editor-in-chief. We've got a bit of information about what exactly Adventure Cats is, and then listen wherever you get your podcast. So there's a podcast called Call Paul, but is it MailChimp? I've got no idea. This is where things start to get slightly confusing. Now, what, one thing you could do with this, for example, is take some of the stuff from that interview and actually post it on the page because people would like that. I'm already on Instagram, so I could then have a look at some of the interview with Laura. I could get her top tips. I could see some of the behind the scenes stuff of how she's using MailChimp to grow her business. That would be great engaging content, which would add value to me. At the moment, this is a really weird semi pitch for something that is unbranded and it's a little bit confusing. But we're going to get to that in just a minute. Basically, the fundamental problem with MailChimp's social media and the reason that they're not generating much engagement is because they are just using it as broadcast. They are shouting at the top of a mountain with a loud hailer down at the people below. There is no listening. There is no response to what people are saying. The key takeaway here is that you want to view social media as if you are in a room with a whole bunch of potential customers and actual customers. Now, you're on the stage in that room, okay? So you've got the microphone, you have the platform. But if you're just standing on that stage, shouting random things about you, the audience will forget why they're there and they will tune out. And that is exactly what has happened here. We have the makings of a good social strategy, 
but it's so broadcast focused, there's no attempt to engage. This is such a vibrant, huge potential community. But at the moment, they're just being shouted at with these weird call Paul messages, which seems to be some sort of podcast and isn't branded MailChimp at all. It's very odd. And by the way, this is where things get really weird. So I told you at the start that MailChimp was doing some weird digital marketing. If I'm honest, they are doing some of the weirdest digital marketing I have ever seen from any brand. And I spend a significant proportion of my life looking at weird digital marketing. So this is no small feat. For those who are in the UK, you may know the character Alan Partridge. So Alan Partridge is a fictional, he's a spoof radio and TV presenter. And he would carry this little dictaphone with him and he would have random ideas for TV shows. And the running theme was that these TV show ideas were utterly ridiculous. He'd often think of the name first and then have to kind of reverse engineer a concept to work with the wordplay in the name. And it's hilarious because Alan Partridge is a fool, right? The goal is that you laugh at him with his silly ideas. Now, I have to be honest, when I started to look into some of the marketing work that MailChimp's doing, I started to get some Alan Partridge vibes. So what if I told you that MailChimp, an email marketing platform, was running a mockumentary video series all about life at trade shows called The Trade Show Show. You'd think that would be pretty mental, right? Well, here's the trailer. And here's the show. They've recorded a season of a trade show mockumentary. That's not all. There's Y Finders, a video series about people who work from different locations on their laptops. They've promoted this ad for Y Finders, so it's had 206,000 views on YouTube. The most viewed video on their YouTube channel is this one, to promote a video series called Second Act. Oyster farm that I knew nothing about. I was so afraid of it. Which seems to be something around starting a business as your second act. But the weirdest of all of them? The Jump. This is a podcast series hosted by Shirley Manson, the singer from 90s indie band Garbage, where she interviews musicians about the point in their career which they identified their creative identity. Wait, is this still the MailChimp deep dive? Yeah. This is an email marketing platform making a podcast with a musician host talking to other musicians about career defining moments. What? Now you can see that some of this stuff is being promoted across their channels and I use the word promoted lightly. So this is what Call Paul, which is all over their Instagram, is about. You wouldn't know that except if you already knew the podcast Call Paul. Most of the most watched videos on their YouTube page aren't instructionals for MailChimp. If you type in MailChimp tutorial on YouTube, you will find videos that have hundreds of thousands of organic views with people showing you how to use MailChimp. But that's not what MailChimp have decided to do. What they've decided to do instead is record these short pre-roll and mid-roll ads for their various folly experiments all about unlikely business lessons, second act, trade show show, why finders, taking stock original series. And they've promoted these to have hundreds of thousands of views. It's super weird. But it gets worse because most of these ad spots don't have any call to action whatsoever. Here's one. It says second act, see the series on MailChimp but it doesn't tell me anything about what MailChimp is, where I would find it, or any of that. There is a link in the description. Hooray, we found a call to action. The only trouble is if you click it, it's been hacked, and it's taking you through to some sort of really weird slot machine type thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for building the Netflix for SMEs. This is basically what ClickFunnels has done with their Funnel Hacker TV or whatever it is where you sign up for ClickFunnels and you get loads of videos which are inspiring and motivational to small business owners because that's their target audience. And they've done a really good job of that and they tie everything back to ClickFunnels, which is super smart. 
But this doesn't feel like that. This feels like they've got a bunch of video people at the company that they've just had to find a use for. It doesn't feel strategic and it doesn't feel joined up whatsoever. So I'm all for creating informational, educational, entertaining content, which is designed for your target customer and makes them fall in love with your brand. That is fantastic. That is exactly what you should be doing. But this isn't that. And the other thing to say is you need to have the basics covered first, such as why are people taking to social media to beat up on your brand and nobody is replying or sorting those comments. This is one of the most indirect attempts to build a brand that I have ever seen. And there is just so much of this content on the MailChimp site. It's totally confusing. Being honest, as I've been researching this, I've just became more and more confused at what they're even trying to do here. Yes, build a long form video strategy. It's a great way of engaging people. Help them to get the most from your platform. Take them behind the scenes of how different business types have exploded their sales using MailChimp software and digital marketing in general. Be the useful, informative source of that type of stuff and present it in an entertaining way. That would be great. But a series about people who love quilting called Quilt Fever. I mean, come on. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. We post a new one every week. Don't forget also, if you want some help with your digital marketing, you can request a free website and digital marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. All you need to do is fill out a bit of information about your business, tell us about your goals. We will then record you a 15 minute video and send it over to you within two to three working days, showing you how to generate more leads and sales from your website completely free of charge. It's an awesome, awesome service. These videos are totally bespoke recorded by our consultancy team. So to get your free website and marketing review, just go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and request your review today. Now let's be absolutely clear, MailChimp is doing loads of stuff really well. So what are the lessons that we want to copy and what are the pitfalls that we want to avoid? Well, first up, think back to that 2001 website. Think about how clear their proposition was, how certain they were about their features, their benefits. They had a compelling next step. They used credibility and they answered objections by showing people what the software looked like behind the scenes. That is the makings of a fantastic business because they understand what they're selling. They've used those messages throughout the life of the business and only recently has that started to become a bit more confused as they've added more features to the product. They've used organic and paid search really effectively. They've built huge visibility on this channel and that's really helped them to grow with people that are looking for what they're after. But as well as that, they've expanded and thought about what else are people buying or what else are people interested in at the stage that they could be a potential customer. They've then built that content on their website and they've also built those features into their product to allow them to expand their customer base. And this is a great activity that you can play with thinking about what else are our customers interested in right at that point of purchase. So that's the good stuff. What about the pitfalls to avoid? Well, the first pitfall to avoid is that thinking social media is just about design. Having nice looking social posts and well created video content is okay, but that is not enough to make entertaining and engaging social media. You've got to think about what does our audience actually need from us? What are they going to benefit from? and position your content around that. You've got to make this engaging. You've got to build in interaction into your social media. Otherwise, it's just like you're shouting down on people and eventually they tune out. Another key mistake to avoid is publishing loads of information content on your website, going to the trouble of writing it, formatting it, having it built on your site, ranking it, only for there to be no way of commercializing that traffic, no call to action, no clear next steps, no sales pitch at all. Think of the piano salesman. That is a bad look. So anytime you're publishing information stuff, you need to be tying that back to your business and driving people through to the core pages on your website. And then the final thing to avoid is this super wide, super broad entertainment-ish video and podcast strategy. Honestly, I've just seen a short video where someone sets up a barista coffee stand outside a station. Lots of people come buy the coffee, then someone comes, gets disgruntled, complains, and then the video ends. And I'm left there thinking, what have I just watched? So anytime you're going to produce information or content or entertainment for your business, tie it into a strategy. 
Make sure you understand why you're doing it, what the outcome is, and how you're going to measure the impact of that on the business. Honestly, I don't even know what they're doing. And please don't go that route unless you've got some solid data to back that up. Now, of course, they might be generating billions of views from these videos. I can't tell because they're all hosted privately. By the way, they should be hosting them on YouTube because then if they're any good, they'll also get organic visibility and reach, which they're not getting now. But anyway, so don't do that. Between us, I don't think I need to tell you to not go and build a Netflix with no aim or purpose on the end of your website. I, ju I just don't think that's going to be an issue. I think you'll be all right. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and we'll see you next week and drop us a comment. What's your favorite weird thing on the MailChimp.com forward slash present section of their website? And if you're from MailChimp and there's a really good reason for doing this, please let us know. We'll bring you onto the podcast to talk all about it. Until next time, see you soon.